students we will discuss today a very important topic antimicrobial agents antimicrobial resistance so the various learning objectives of today's session include we will classify antimicrobial agents we will also discuss the various antimicrobial resistance intrinsic and acquired resistance we will differentiate between the mutational and transferable antimicrobial resistance we will also discuss the various uh, mechanisms behind antimicrobial resistance so uh, what do you mean by antimicrobial agents antimicrobial agents are the agents that are used either to kill or inhibit microorganism okay so the concept of antimicrobial agents was there since the ancient time paul ulrich was the scientist who is who is known as the father of uh, uh, chemotherapy he has introduced a molecule known as salvarsan this he had used for treatment of a sexually transmitted disease known as syphilis uh, salvarsan was an arsenic uh, compound he has used this for the for the treatment of syphilis so he is known as father of uh, chemotherapy soon later in 1940s it was the great alexander fleming who has discovered the first antibiotic of the world uh, that is uh, penicillin following which uh, there were so many antimicrobial agents which were discovered and that has brought a great reduction of uh, mortality in times of infections okay so the infectious disease were treated after the discovery of penicillin and uh, that was a great invention uh, to the science okay so how you will classify the antimicrobial agents can be classified the base upon various way the first is according to the spectrum of activity which can be classified as antibacterial antiviral antibacterial will kill the bacteria antiviral will be targeted against the viruses anti parasitic and anti fungal okay they can also be classified based upon the nature of action uh, whether they will kill or inhibit the microorganism all the all the antimicrobial agents will not be killing some of the agents may just inhibit the uh, microorganism also if they will kill those agents are called as sidal that is example bactericidal virucidal fungicidal and if they are inhibiting then those agents were are uh, named with a uh, suffix static example bacteriostatic okay bactericidal means they will kill bacteria or bacteriostatic means they will inhibit uh, bacteria can also be classified according to the source source from which the antimicrobial agents are derived most of the antimicrobial agents are derived from various microorganisms okay various uh, microorganisms they produce antibiotic those are called as antibiotic so if the source is from other uh, microorganisms those kind of antimicrobial agents are called as antibiotic if the source is by chemical synthesis then those antimicrobial agents are called as chemotherapeutic agents if the source is by uh, chemical synthesis then those agents are called as chemo uh, therapeutic agents okay we can also classify the uh, antimicrobial agent based upon their uses where you are going to use if they are going to use inside the body or if or you are going to use on the surface of the body or you are going to use in the environment the antimicrobial agent was you are going to use for the environmental cleaning environmental killing of the uh, microorganism those are called as disinfectant the agents which are used for body inside human body are known as antibiotics 
and those are used on the surface of human body those are known as antiseptics they are topical agents they will be used on the surface you can also classify the antimicrobial agents based upon their chemical structure and uh, mechanism of action this slide will show you uh, what are the various uh, mechanism of action of antimicrobial agents they can either inhibit the cell wall they or they can inhibit the protein synthesis or they can inhibit the cell membrane they can also inhibit the synthesis of nucleic acid or they can also inhibit the various metabolic pathways cell wall inhibition these are the antibiotic among which the most important is uh, beta lactam antibiotic uh, protein synthesis inhibition either by inhibiting the uh, uh, 30s uh, ribosome or by inhibiting the uh, uh, 50s uh, ribosome these are the uh, various antimicrobial agents under each category uh, polymyxin b can inhibit the cytoplasmic uh, membrane nucleic acid inhibitors include fluoroquinolones and others so, uh, similarly uh, metabolic uh, pathway inhibitor include uh, sulfonamides so these are the overall classification of antimicrobial agent so we will discuss uh, one by one and we will discuss under their uh, mechanism of action uh, so to start with uh, we will discuss the cell wall inhibitor antimicrobial agents okay so the uh, cell wall inhibitor antimicrobial agent the most important among which is beta lactam antibiotic okay a beta lactam antibiotic is uh, one of the most widely used antibiotic okay uh, one of the most widely used antibiotic in the hospital the mechanism of action of uh, beta lactam antibiotic include they act on the cell wall okay they act on the cell wall protein known as penicillin binding protein the penicillin binding uh, protein this is a transpeptidase enzyme in nature this uh, protein is transpeptidase in nature which is required this is a normal protein uh, present in the cell membrane outer cell membrane and this protein is transpeptidase in nature this is uh, required for cell wall synthesis by inducing cross linking of the uh, peptidoglycan layers okay so this transpeptidase enzyme is required for cross linking of the uh, peptidoglycan layer and a uh, penicillin binding protein is a normal protein it is a essential protein for cell wall synthesis beta lactam antibiotic they bind to this uh, protein and they inhibit this protein as a result what happens is cell wall uh, synthesis get inhibited transpeptidase will get inhibited as a result uh, peptidoglycan layer uh, synthesis will get inhibited as a result the cell wall uh, synthesis gets inhibited so uh, this is how the all type of uh, beta lactam drug they work with this common principle okay so now uh, let us discuss how is their mechanism of resistance beta lactam drug they they undergo uh, they show resistance by various uh, mechanisms all beta lactam drug okay the most common uh, mechanism is by enzymatic inactivation enzymatic inactivation they produce various enzymes known as beta lactamase enzyme the classical example of uh, beta lactamase enzyme is penicillinase there are various uh, uh, beta lactamase enzymes we will discuss towards the later slides of this session so this kind of uh, beta lactamase enzymes they break down the beta lactam rings they break down the beta lactam rings okay 
you know why this antibiotics are called as beta lactam antibiotic uh, because in their uh, chemical structure they they possess a beta lactam ring each antibiotic under a uh, uh, beta lactam class of antibiotic they vary from each other in their chemical structure but they have a ring uh, which is called as beta lactam ring and these enzymes uh, beta lactam is enzyme they break down a uh, beta lactam ring thereby they inactivate the drug okay this is the first uh, mechanism of action the second mechanism of action is by altering the target which is the target of uh, beta lactam antibiotic they act on which protein on the cell wall yes they act on penicillin binding protein which is present on the cell wall so the uh, penicillin binding protein gets altered to a uh, penicillin binding protein 2a or maybe some other uh, protein also so this altered protein has less affinity for beta lactam drug this altered uh, protein has less affinity for uh, beta lactam drug normally in a normal uh, bacterial uh, cell wall the uh, beta lactam they usually bind to a uh, penicillin binding protein as a result the penicillin binding protein gets inhibited as a result the cell wall uh, synthesis get inhibited in this case when the organism so resistance to uh, beta lactam what happens is one of the mechanism is alteration alteration of the target where the penicillin binding protein get altered to a altered protein known as a penicillin binding protein 2a which has less affinity for a beta lactam drug as a result the beta lactam drug will not go and bind and therefore the cell wall uh, synthesis will not be inhibited the cell wall uh, synthesis will not be inhibited uh, this is how the mechanism of uh, resistance so this uh, mechanism of uh, resistance by alteration of target usually shown by gram positive bacteria the classical example is mrsa that is methicillin resistant staph aureus the methicillin resistant staph aureus is a subtype of uh, staphylococcus aureus which show resistant to beta lactam antibiotic by alteration of target whereas the enzyme inactivation which is the most common uh, method of uh, uh, resistance shown by the uh, beta lactam drugs this is exhibited by both gram uh, positive as well as by gram uh, negative organisms okay the it, they have a third uh, mechanism of resistance also which is decrease in permeability a uh, decrease in permeability of the cell membrane so which result in improper penetration of antibiotic into the cell okay so these are the broad mechanisms by which uh, beta lactam so uh, resistance so next we will discuss the various classes of uh, beta lactam antibiotics a uh, beta lactam antibiotics include a broad range of antibiotic which can be grouped into various classes the first group is penicillins which include a uh, penicillin g procaine penicillin benzathione penicillin okay so all these uh, penicillins the uh, mechanism of action is same what we have discussed the mechanism of resistance is also same uh, uh, what we have discussed i will just tell you where they act which organisms they act they act on various organisms like beta hemolytic streptococcus they also act on corynebacterium diphtheri meningococcus gonococcus enterococcus okay then they also act on a uh, trypanoma uh, pallidum it is a drug of choice uh, penicillin g is the uh, a drug of choice for uh, syphilis a uh, penicillin g is also the drug of choice for diphtheria okay so these are the various organisms where the 
penicillin group of drug will work so we will we are discussing the abetalactam drug in ranging from the lowest spectrum of activity to the higher uh, spectrum of activity the lowest spectrum of activity of class of drug is a uh, penicillin group of drug the next group of abetalactam agent uh, are a uh, penicillin is resistant a uh, penicillin the basic drawback of penicillin group of antibiotic what we have discussed in the previous slide is they are destroyed by a uh, penicillinase enzyme as a result uh, staphylococcus aureus which used to be sensitive to a uh, penicillin earlier now 90% of uh, staphylococcus aureus are resistant to penicillin because of production of penicillinase enzyme so uh, that is why the next class of antimicrobial agent were discovered which are called as penicillinase resistant uh, penicillin his class of antibiotic the classical example is oxacillin cloxacillin dicloxacillin uh, methicillin so this group of antibiotic they have a property of resisting uh, penicillinase enzyme so these are called as uh, penicillinase resistant or penicillinase stable uh, 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 penicillin these are also uh, popularly called as anti staphylococcal uh, penicillins so their uh, mechanism of there is a spectrum of activity include they act on staph aureus okay they act on staph aureus but please remember they can also be resistant to staph aureus by expressing by altering the penicillin binding protein so the when the penicillin binding protein gets altered to a, a penicillin binding protein 2a then the staph aureus will become a uh, resistant to this group of anti staphylococcal penicillin those phenotype of staph aureus are called as mrsa stands for a methicillin resistant staph aureus though they are called as a methicillin resistant staph aureus because the target site is been altered so they are virtually resistant to all antibiotic all uh, beta lactam antibiotic okay so kindly remember mrsa strain is a, a, the word mrsa is a misnomer it is not alone methicillin uh, resistant it is resistant to all beta lactam antibiotic okay so the next class of antibiotic what we'll discuss is amino penicillin or extended spectrum uh, penicillin like ampicillin and amoxicillin in addition to the spectrum of uh, penicillin group of antibiotic the ampicillin and amoxicillin in addition they also act on gram negatives they also act on uh, gram negatives they act uh, better on enterococcus so the, these are their additional spectrum of activity okay so the next class of antibiotic what we'll discuss is anti pseudomonal uh, penicillin so their spectrum of activity is like same as the previous group uh, that is amino penicillin uh, spectrum plus they also act on pseudomonas aeruginosa okay the previous group that is uh, the previous group that is ampicillin amoxicillin they act on gram negative like e coli okay they act on gram negative like e coli however they do not act on pseudomonas whereas the next group is anti pseudomonal uh, penicillin uh, which include carbamicillin a uh, ticarcillin and penicillin they act on pseudomonas aeruginosa a uh, mechanism of of resistance is same for all abetalactam antibiotic what we have discussed earlier so that's why we are not this again and again the next group is beta lactam beta lactam is inhibitor so there are few antimicrobial agents which are available are uh, the, uh, there are few agents which are available known as beta lactam is inhibitor okay so this agent they inhibit the beta lactamase enzyme uh, are produced by the organism so when you combine this agent along with the uh, uh, beta lactam uh, drugs the combination drug ha will have a property of inhibiting the beta lactam enzyme are uh, produced by the organism the classical e example include ampicillin sulbactam okay amoxiclav or amoxicillin clavulinic acid okay 
the previous class of enzyme that is antibiotic that is anti pseudomonal antibiotic the classical example is piperacillin carboracillin and articarcillin so in this you can take one antibiotic known as piperacillin this uh, combination is available along with tazobactam piptaz so this kind of antimicrobial agents are uh, commonly used and the advantage is they will overcome the resistance uh, due to beta-lactamase enzyme they will destroy the beta-lactamase ring okay the next group of uh, beta-lactam antibiotic include cephalosporins the mechanism of action and the mechanism of resistance for all beta-lactam are same so we are not discussing again and again under uh, cephalosporin they the, uh, there are five group of five classes of uh, cephalosporin the first class include uh, cephazolin and uh, cephalexin they are having mostly gram uh, positive coverage they have mostly gram uh, positive coverage the second class include uh, cefoxetin uh, cefaclor and cefiroxim they have same activity as first group plus they have increased gmb activity gram uh, negative activity the third group include uh, ceftriaxone uh, cefotaxim and uh, ceftazidine they are widely used in the hospital they ha also have the same action as the second group but the difference is they have more gmb activity and they have reduced gram positive activity okay in that uh, some of the antibiotic like uh, ceftazidim will have pseudomonas activity also anti uh, pseudomonal activity also fourth class of phosphorin include uh, cefepim and uh, cefpirom they have increased gram negative activity including pseudomonas including pseudomonas okay the fifth generation antibiotic is uh, ceftobiprol and ceftarolin so they are the fifth generation uh, cephalosporin they are active against mrsa in fact they are the only beta lactam group of antibiotic uh, antibiotics which have anti mrsa activity okay the first uh, second and third class of uh, generation of uh, cephalosporins they are usually inhibited by ESBL enzyme. They are the extended spectrum beta lactam enzyme, uh, mainly produced by gram uh, negative organism. And this gram negative organism, because of this enzyme, they destroy the beta lactam ring of the first, second, third generation uh, cephalosporin. Okay. So now we will discuss about the next class. The next class of uh, beta lactam, they are the carbapenem they have the highest spectrum of activity these are the, so the lowest spectrum of activity of beta lactam are the are the penicillin the next is uh, anti staphylococcal uh, penicillin the next is amino penicillin which which have in addition gram negative coverage the next group is anti pseudomonal uh, penicillin then you have beta lactam beta lactam is inhibitor group of beta lactam drugs uh, the combination drugs then you have uh, cephalosporins then the next class is carbapenem carbapenem has the highest uh, spectrum of activity they are having increased activity to gram positives excellent activity to gram uh, negative they have anaerobic good coverage also the classical examples include miropenem imipenem doripenem and ertapenem Okay, they also can be resistant uh, because of the similar mechanisms. The most common is uh, production of beta lactamase enzyme. The beta lactamase enzyme which are resistant to the carbapenem group of drugs, they are called as carbapenemase enzymes. Of course, uh, if plus pump or alteration of uh, penicillin binding protein, these are the other mechanisms how we have discussed earlier. Okay, next is astrionum, another group of antibiotic the the compound is the drug is again astrionum they have only one drug the spectrum of activity include it acts usually on gram uh, negative organisms okay the mechanism of, of resistance is same to any other 
abitalactam antibiotic. So uh, uh, this is all about abitalactam antibiotic. They are the most widely used antimicrobial agent in, in the hospital. Now we will discuss about other cellulolactic antibiotic to start with glycopeptides. Glycopeptide the classical example is vancomycin and ticoplanin. Vancomycin and ticoplanin are the drug of choice for MRSA. I told you that for MRSA they are resistant to all beta-lactam antibiotics. The usual drug of choice for staph aureus. For staph aureus the usual drug of choice is anybody can we have discussed earlier anti-staphylococcal uh, penicillin like oxacillin and cloxacillin. But if the staph aureus will become resistant to oxacillin those strains are called as MRSA. MRSA are resistant to all beta-lactam antibiotics. So for them the drug of choice is vancomycin and ticoplanin. Vancomycin especially is the uh, drug of choice for MRSA. They are all given for enterococcus. Vancomycin and uh, articoplanin are also uh, are recommended for enterococcus. They have principally they have good gram positive coverage. They do not have gram or negative coverage. They do not act on gram negative organism. They act only on gram uh, positive organism. The mechanism of action, the mechanism of action of glycopeptide like vancomycin and ticoplanin, they usually act on cell wall by inhibiting they inhibit the peptidoglycan side chain uh, peptide D alanine D alanine D alanine D alanine is the amino acids uh, present in the side chain of the uh, peptidoglycan the vancomycin and articoplanin they usually act on this enzyme act on this uh, side chain and they inhibit this thereby they inhibit the cell wall synthesis uh, that is how the uh, vancomycin acts and the mechanism of resistance to vancomycin and ticoplanin is just the opposite to that they usually target the organisms will change their target the d alanine d alanine the, uh, which is the uh, target site of uh, vancomycin uh, present in the cell wall of the organism that gets altered to any other molecule like d alanine d lactate or d alanine d serine and this altered proteins will have less affinity for a vancomycin uh, that is the mechanism of resistance shown by enterococcus against the vancomycin okay the next class of cell wall acting antibiotic is phospomycin phospomycin usually act on the enzyme which is required this enzyme is, is called as mu ray enzyme which is usually required for the synthesis of the precursors of cell wall and when this enzyme get inhibited as a result the cell wall uh, synthesis get get inhibited uh, phospomycin the usual spectrum of activity they usually act on enterococcus they also act on e coli and klebsiella but kindly uh, remember they are recommended for the uti isolates the uh, urinary tract infection isolates of enterococcus e coli uh, klebsiella they have acts at the urinary tract okay so uh, this is about phospomycin the next the lower acting drug is bacitracin they are usually used as a uh, topical antibiotic a uh, topical antibiotic for the ointment and antiseptic they are used they are also of diagnostic use uh, bacitracin is used for uh, differentiating group A and group B streptococcus. The group A and group B streptococcus can be differentiated by using the uh, uh, antibiotic such as uh, bacitracin. So, uh, so these are the various uh, cell wall acting antibiotic. The next class of antibiotic what we will discuss is those which will inhibit the protein uh, synthesis. The protein synthesis inhibitor antibiotic are broadly classified into 
the antibiotic which, which will inhibit r30s or ribosome and the antibiotic which will act on 50s ribosome so the anti uh, r30s uh, ribosomal antibiotic include aminoglycosides two important class aminoglycosides and tetracycline aminoglycoside there are various antibiotic the classical example is gentamicin amikacin and all that they are bactericidal okay they usually act by irreversibly binding to the s r ribosome they have excellent activity for gram uh, negatives also they can act on gram uh, positive like enterococcus but principally they have increased activity on gram uh, negative the uh, mechanism of uh, resistance shown by aminoglycoside include they act by uh, producing various aminoglycoside modifying enzyme they produce three important aminoglycoside uh, modifying enzyme uh, such as acetyl transferase acetyl transferase phosphotransferase and nucleotidyl transferase nucleotidyl transferase so those kind of enzymes they destroy the aminoglycoside uh, molecules so uh, uh, that is how the organisms so are uh, resistant to aminoglycoside they have another mechanism of uh, uh, resistance by by decreasing the permeability uh, due to the mutations in the outer membrane uh, protein of the cell okay so this is all about aminoglycoside tetracyclines are another class of antibiotic which also act on r30s uh, ribosome they block usually the trna attachment okay the classical examples include tetracycline doxycycline and minocycline okay they have excellent action on various atypical organisms like spirochetes rickettsia okay chlamydia mycoplasma they are also given for bacillus anthracis okay and for other organisms like brucella so the mechanism of resistance to the tetracycline group of antimicrobial include either by expressing efflux pumps efflux pump will remove the antibiotic actively from the cell or also by alteration of ribosomal targets the r30s ribosomal r target that gets altered so uh, these are about anti r30s antimicrobials so now let us discuss the various nt50s antimicrobial agents these are the antimicrobial agents which act on r50s uh, ribosomal unit the classical example is uh, chloramphenicol chloramphenicol was uh, one of the most widely used antimicrobial in the olden days the last few decade the use has been greatly reduced Uh, because of its widespread uh, resistance mainly because of the acetyl transferase enzyme production or or efflux pump uh, mechanisms and also the uh, chloramphenicol is highly toxic so uh, because of its resistance and uh, toxicity the use has been reduced but it has a great activity on cns it penetrates accident to the blood brain uh, barrier so it has a good action on uh, meningitis and brain abscess so the uh, clinical indication of chloramphenicol include brain abscess and uh, meningitis it has a good action on uh, hemophilus influenza and also the agent of typhoid fever that is salmonella typhi so these organisms are killed by uh, chloramphenicol excellently The next class of antimicrobials are the uh, uh, macrolide the classical examples are erythromycin azithromycin and clarithromycin they have a good action on various uh, atypical group of antibiotic like chlamydia mycoplasma azithromycin is indicated for the for respiratory tract infection 
Clarithromycin is uh, given for peptic ulcer disease, for H. pylori, uh, peptic ulcer disease for H. pylori. Okay, so these are the various uh, uh, spectrum of activity of macrolide. The mechanism of origin include efflux pump as, as well as alteration of the uh, target site. Okay, the next class of antibiotic is lincosamide. The classical example is clindamycin. Clindamycin has a good anaerobic coverage. It also acts well on Staphylococcus aureus and also on Streptococcus, especially beta hemolytic uh, streptococcus. Clindamycin, the action is good in skin and soft tissue infection. Okay, so the various skin and soft tissue infection due to uh, uh, Staphylococcus aureus or due to anaerobic infection, clindamycin is uh, one of the recommended antimicrobial. Next is streptogramin. Uh, streptogramin, the classical example are quinpristine and dalfopristin. They act well on the uh, anti uh, organisms uh, such as Staphylococcus aureus. They act well on MRSA uh, phenotype of Staph aureus and they also act well on Enterococcus. Okay. Alinazolid is the next group of antibiotic which act on R50S ribosome. It acts by inhibiting the initiation uh, complex at R50S ribosome. Again the uh, action, uh, the spectrum of activity include MRSA and Enterococcus. They usually act on gram positive antibiotic. Mipirocin, again it acts on uh, by inhibiting isoleucyl tRNA synthesis and it is a topical antibiotic. Okay, and apart from its uh, topical use, uh, mipirocin is also used as an antiseptic for as a nasal ointment. for the carriers of MRSA. The nasal carriers of MRSA, the nasal carriers of MRSA, uh, mipirocin ointment is the recommended antimicrobial agent. So these are the antimicrobials which act on anti-50S ribosome. Now we will move on to the DNA synthesis inhibitor. So we have now completed the cell wall synthesis inhibitors. Protein synthesis inhibitor. Now we will move on to the nucleic acid inhibitors to start with DNA synthesis inhibitor. The classical two group of antimicrobials include fluoroquinolones and metronidazole. Fluoroquinolones, the classical examples are norfloxacin and uh, ciprofloxacin. They have excellent activity on gram negatives. They are uh, given for treatment of UTI, diarrhea. Okay, uh, some of the antimicrobials like ciprofloxacin they act on anti pseudomonial also. Okay, the uh, mechanism of action of fluoroquinol include they they are inhibitor of DNA gyrase, DNA gyrase and DNA topoisomerase. These are the enzymes which are required for DNA synthesis of the organisms. So the fluoroquinones act by inhibiting these enzymes. And the mechanism of resistance involves alteration of the target that is mutation in the DNA gyrase genes. This is the main mechanism. Other mechanisms include poor transport across the cell membrane. Okay. So the next class of antimicrobial is metronidazole. It has excellent activity for anaerobes. Uh, metronidazoles they act well on anaerobic infection. Apart from that, they, it has anti-protozoa action. It is given for antamoeba histolytica, giardia, trichomonas. So for all this uh, protozoan infection, okay, metronidazole is the drug of choice. Okay, uh, next we will discuss about RNA synthesis inhibitor. Again, the classical example is rifampicin. 
it it inhibits the rna uh, polymerase okay the spectrum of activity of uh, of uh, rifampicin include it acts well on uh, uh, mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis and mycobacterium lepra it is uh, one of the drug which is used in combination with other drugs for treatment of tuberculosis and uh, leprosy okay apart from that it its other use include it is also a given for treatment of brucellosis also it is given for as as chemoprophylaxis for meningococcal infections a uh, meningococcal infection uh, rifampicin can be given as a chemoprophylaxis again the uh, mutation in the rpob gene the gene which is uh, which the rifampicin usually inhibits uh, the mutation of the target gene is the principal uh, mechanism of resistance next we will discuss mycolic acid uh, synthesis inhibitor the classical example is isoniazide which is again uh, one of the most active drug for uh, mycobacterium uh, or tuberculosis it is given along with uh, rifampicin so the action of isoniazide is by inhibiting the mycolic acid which is uh, present as a part of the cell wall of the uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis again the mutation in the enzyme which is responsible for uh, processing of isoniazide into its active compound uh, that is the cat enzyme okay the cat g enzyme the uh, mutation of this enzyme which is responsible for uh, converting isoniazide into its active compound this is the principal uh, mechanism of uh, resistance to isoniazide the next class of antibiotic is folic acid uh, synthesis inhibitor the classical examples are sulfonamide and uh, trimethoprim how they work is they inhibit the various enzymes responsible for synthesis of folic acid you know that uh, folic acid is synthesized from a, a molecule called as paba that is para amino benzoic acid which is converted to dihydro folate by a enzyme called as folate synthesis and the dihydro folate can be further converted to tetrahydro folate by a enzyme called as dihydro folate reductase okay so sulfonamide they act by inhibiting the first enzyme uh, that is folate synthesis uh, similarly trimethoprim they act by inhibiting the second enzyme that is dihydro folate reductase so the various examples under this antibiotic include sulfonamide the uh, the commonly used antimicrobials are sulfur diazin and sulfur acetamide they are a uh, topical antibiotic uh, sulfur diazin is used as an antiseptic for various burn wound infection various burn wound infections trimethoprim trimethoprim is used in combination with sulfamethoxazole and this uh, combination drug is called as cotramoxazole and cotramoxazole has various action they are the drug of choice for various infection uh, such as uti and uh, dysentery due to uh, shigella they also act on various gram negative uh, such as burkhelderia stenotrophomonas for all this uh, uh, non fermenters cotrimoxazole act well okay they also act on various parasite they have anti parasitic action like toxoplasma and cotrimoxazole also act on various fungi they have anti fungal action the classical example is nemocystis gyrovis okay so these are the various uh, indications where cotrimoxazole is uh, is used the most popular uh, commercial name for cotrimoxazole is septran okay so the next class of antimicrobial is those agents which act on cell membrane the classical example is polymyxins which include uh, polymyxin b and cholestin 
they have excellent gram negative activity they are one of the most highest spectrum gram uh, negative antimicrobial available polystin and uh, polymyxin usually they are used in icus they have excellent gram negative uh, coverage and also organism can so resistant to this antimicrobial either by efflux pump uh, mediated action or alteration of the target okay they usually act on the cell uh, membrane daptomycin and uh, gramycidin are the other antimicrobial which act on the uh, cell membrane they act by forming pores on cell membrane uh, daptomycin has excellent activity on gram uh, positive organism like staphylococcus as well as enterococcus they have good activity the importance for daptomycin what you need to know is it is not active for respiratory infections for the respiratory infections it is not active uh, because it is inactivated by pulmonary surfactants it is inactivated by uh, pulmonary uh, surfactants and therefore uh, daptomycin should be avoided for various uh, respiratory infections uh, gramycidin again it is of a uh, topical use uh, mainly it is active for some of the gram positive and gram uh, uh, negative antimicrobial it is used uh, mainly as antiseptic okay antimicrobial resistance is defined as a uh, development of a uh, resistance or uh, to the various antimicrobial agents by the uh, microorganisms so the the day of discovery of penicillin by alexander fleming the next day itself the organism the staphylococcus aureus started showing a uh, resistance to penicillin so antimicrobial resistance is uh, one of the reason why the use of antimicrobial has been compromised okay antimicrobial resistance broadly uh, may be of two type intrinsic resistant and acquired resistance intrinsic resistance means what this kind of a resistance the organism develop organism so intrinsic uh, resistance which is hereditary in nature this resistance are inherently present in the organism and they are so such kind of organisms are always uh, resistant to this kind of antibiotic the uh, the various example include aminoglycoside usually the various anaerobic organisms are, are resistant to aminoglycoside the next class like for example vancomycin vancomycin will be resistant by all gram negative organisms uh, similarly colistin organisms such as burkholderia proteus group of organism okay so these kind of organisms are intrinsically resistant to colistin it is very important for the clinician to know which antimicrobials the clinician must avoid in which infections because intrinsic resistant means the organism will always be resistant to this class of antibiotic but the thing is intrinsic resistant is available only for few antibiotic the various organisms they are intrinsically resistant to only few class of antibiotic so this is not a therapeutic challenge for the clinician because they know which antibiotic which organism will be resistant intrinsically the resistance which has a great uh, therapeutic challenge is acquired resistance the meaning of acquired resistance is the organism initially was susceptible to the antibiotic to the antibiotic later it will acquire the gene for developing a uh, resistant to the particular antibiotic so this is called as acquired resistance the development of our resistance is acquired by the isolate the mechanism of acquired resistance include you just see that antibiotic pressure antibiotic pressure is one of the most important reason why acquired resistance occurs so suppose before the antibiotic start uh, so suppose 
the patient has been harboring a group of organisms in which the majority of organisms are susceptible to a particular antibiotic or uh, let us say the example is amikacin so before you start up amikacin uh, suppose uh, the majority of organisms are susceptible to amikacin maybe a uh, one or two resistant uh, bacterium are present what happens is when you start antibiotic the all the susceptible organisms will die uh, because of amikacin uh, treatment what will remain is the one or two resistance strain so that is called as selective uh, pressure of antibiotic that leads to uh, selection of the resistant isolates which is followed by uh, multiplication of those uh, resistance strain uh, because the nutrition of what will be available is only for those uh, resistant antibiotic no uh, resistant organisms uh, no susceptible organisms will be present at that moment so the resistant organism will flourish nicely and finally you will have a, a population of uh, resistant strains those resistant strain then will spread in the environment they will go from one patient to other patient they will go from one environmental surface to the to other environmental uh, surface due to poor infection control practices so uh, this is how the uh, acquired resistance and please remember acquired uh, resistance is a very important uh, therapeutic challenge the clinicians will be aware of the intrinsic resistance as i told you earlier however uh, uh, therapeutic the uh, the acquired resistance uh, the clinician will not be knowing so what are the various uh, factor uh, responsible for acquired resistance as i told you overuse and misuse of antibiotic overuse and misuse of antibiotic uh, you should not overload the antibiotic to the patient to treat various infection you should give a targeted uh, therapy which is called as first you should give an empirical therapy based upon what clinical syndrome you are suspecting and for that clinical syndrome what are the common uh, organisms which are, are, are responsible for that clinical syndrome and the third factor which will decide is uh, what is the common antibiotic resistant uh, pattern for those organisms in your locality based upon this three factor you start a, a particular empirical antibiotic then you send for cultures and when the culture and the susceptibility report will be available based upon that you have to change to targeted therapy or a pathogen directed Uh, therapy based upon the culture report whichever uh, which general antibiotic is working that particular antibiotic has to be given so this is the correct uh, method of antibiotic use what happens is uh, the clinicians often they will not know what organism is there in the patient and they will just like that overuse or misuse antibiotic over the counter cell over the counter cell is one of the reason Uh, without prescription the uh, the pharmacists they usually sell the antibiotic that should not happen if that happens then the general public will start buying antibiotic already they are doing that they start uh, buying the uh, buying the antibiotic so that leads to misuse and overuse of antibiotic next is poor infection control practices so overuse and misuse of antibiotic will create antibiotic pressure and when antibiotic uh, pressure is there one of the susceptible strain may undergoesen and will become a resistant strain but how that resistant strain will spread in the community or in the hospital that happens uh, because of the poor infection control uh, practices especially in the hospital environment and poor disinfection uh, practices the uh, the resistant bacteria are easily transmitted to other patient or other environmental surface so let us discuss the differences uh, uh, between uh, mutational and transferable drug resistance mutational uh, drug resistance when the organism undergo a uh, mutation it will maximum uh, develop a uh, resistance to one drug at a time okay and usually the resistance is of low degree therefore because it is one drug at a time the resistance can be overcome by combination of drugs the classical example is the 
drugs used for uh, are tuberculosis the anti tubercular drug anti tubercular drug like how we have discussed isoniazide and uh, uh, rifampicin they use the organism usually are develop a uh, resistant by undergoing uh, mutation so the mutational drug uh, resistant is usually of low degree it will be one drug at a time the organism will be resistant and which can be overcome by using combination of drug this is the reason why the anti tubercular drugs are given in combination the virulence of the resistant uh, mutants are usually not altered or it may be even lowered also and you know the mutational uh, resistant is uh, resistance is not transferable to other organism it is only spread to the offspring by vertical transmission in contrast the transferable drug resistance is usually plasmid coded and they are usually transferred from one organism to other organism by conjugation uh conjugation is the most common uh, mechanism of transferable drug resistance rarely it, it can also be done by transduction and here the drug resistance which happen is multiple drug at a time the same resistant plasmid can code for the resistant genes to uh, multiple antibiotic therefore the degree of uh, resistance is high and because it is uh, resistant to a uh, multiple antibiotic at the same time it cannot be overcome by use of a uh, combination of drug and the virulence here is usually not decrease it remains intact whereas the mutational uh, drug resistance the virulence may be lowered and the transferable drug resistance as i told you it spread by horizontal transfer usually by conjugation rarely by transduction also Okay, so now we will discuss what are the various mechanisms by which the organisms develop a resistance. Broadly, there are four mechanisms: decreased uh, permeability across the cell wall. Okay, the organism, the uh, uh, permeable, the antibiotic entry will be inhibited uh, because of decrease in the permeability across the cell wall. This happens uh, because of the mutation of outer membrane proteins outer membrane uh, proteins are usually present as a part of cell wall usually seen in gram uh, negative organism so that gets altered as a result the organ the the influx of the antibiotic into the cell will be uh, will be prevented next is by efflux pump efflux pump means what organism they undergo a uh, mutation to carry various efflux pump the role of the efflux uh, pump is it actively remove the antibiotics outside okay so antibiotics will enter into the cell into the bacterial cell before the antibiotic will act the efflux pumps are uh, present in the cell wall of the organism it will actively remove the antibiotic out of the cell efflux pump is another uh, mechanism uh by which the organism may be uh, resistant to several antibiotic at the same time the most common uh, method of uh, antimicrobial uh, resistance is by enzymatic inactivation various organisms they produce several enzymes uh, by which they become uh, resistant to various antibiotic the classical example is beta lactamase enzyme i will discuss about various classes of uh, beta lactamase enzyme in the subsequent slide this enzymes this group of enzymes are, are responsible for destruction of beta lactam rings which are present in the various antibiotics of class uh, beta lactam okay it is also the organism can also be resistant to various amino glycosides by producing various amino glycoside modifying enzymes the amino glycoside modifying enzymes Uh, such as phosphotransferase we have discussed about this earlier also phosphotransferase then n acetyl transferase then nucleotidyl transferase these are the three important amino glycoside uh, uh, modifying agent which is responsible for developing a uh, resistant to various classes of amino glycoside 
okay so this is all about enzymatic inactivity uh, this is uh, one of the most common uh, method of uh, developing resistance the last but the most important is modification of target site okay mrsa mrsa i told that the i told you earlier that the target site of betalactam antibiotic that is the penicillin binding protein this gets altered to penicillin binding protein 2a and the altered protein has less affinity for the uh, uh, betalactam antibiotic or uh, uh, like that the various target site of the uh, of the bacteria in which the the antibiotic will act those target site get altered apart from mrsa the other examples include the mechanism action of vancomycin uh, resistance in enterococcus vre vancomycin uh, resistant in enterococcus this also occurs uh, because of the target site alteration the target site is dialanin dialanin sequence this gets uh, dialanin dialanin is a side chain in the peptidoglycan this gets altered to dialanin as i discussed earlier d lactate or d alanine d serine this is responsible for a resistance to a vancomycin okay so these are the various examples of modification of target site okay how uh, we have discussed the various uh, mechanism of uh, resistance by the organism the most important mechanism of resistance is by a uh, production of various enzymes that will inactivate the antibiotic okay the classical group of enzyme is betalactamase enzyme a betalactamase enzyme can be classed in various way two important classifications are there ambler classification and bush jacobi classification bush uh, jacobi uh, classification is a very complex uh, classification we will just try to uh, discuss the ambler classification which is a structural classification according to this four classes of Uh, betalactamase enzymes are there class a is espl stands for extended spectrum betalactamase okay class b is metallo betalactamase mbl metallo uh, beta lactamase enzyme class c is amp c betalactamase and class d is oxacillinase so what happens is the class a uh, that is esbl extended spectrum uh, betalactamase the organism producing esbl enzyme are usually resistant to the uh, the penicillins first second and third generation cephalosporin and also by astreonal okay and the resistance can be overcome by use of beta lactamase inhibitor uh, for example amoxicillin clavulanic acid a uh, combination okay so esbl enzyme produces into first second third line uh, uh, cephalosporin and which is overcome by the addition of betalactamase inhibitor then comes to amp c uh, betalactamase in addition to the spectrum of class a in addition to the spectrum of esbl the amp c uh, producers are also resistant to the cefamycins such as cefoxitin and cefotitan and uh, this is the first uh, difference and the uh, second difference is the resistance cannot be overcome by addition of beta lactamase inhibitor okay the resistance cannot be overcome by addition of uh, abetalactamase inhibitor so the only option available for amc abetalactamase uh, uh, producer is carbapenem carbapenem can act on amc uh, uh, producers 
MBL or metallobutylectomies in addition to AMC spectrum, AMC uh, butylectomies spectrum, they are also resistant to carbapenems. And the resistance cannot be overcome by addition of beta lactamase inhibitors. So, the option available to treat uh, metallo beta lactamase enzyme uh, producer is you have to change the class, you have to give any other class of antibiotic, not beta lactam antibiotic because they will be resistant to all beta lactam antibiotic including carbapenems ok so the uh, clinicians uh, need to have an overall idea about the various classes of uh, beta lactam enzyme uh, what are the therapeutic options available for them i repeat uh, once again the uh, the therapeutic options available for esbl enzyme uh, producer include either you can give kefamycin or you can give carbapenems okay or you can give carbapenems or you can give beta lactamase beta lactamase inhibitor combination like amoxiclar so these are the three options available for esbl producer whereas for amc producer the resistance cannot be overcome by any uh, addition of uh, beta lactamase inhibitor so so that option is not there for you so the and also the kefamycin you, uh, you cannot give so the only option available is you can give carbapenem for metallobutylactamase carbapenem also you cannot give because it is uh, resistant of course it cannot be overcome by addition of uh, betalactamase inhibitor so the option left for the clinician is you should switch over to other class of antibiotic like aminoglycoside or any other class uh, so here are some questions for you The first question for you is beta lactams act by okay the the answer to this is uh, beta lactam act by inhibiting the cell wall synthesis the next question for you is in mrsa that is the methicillin resistance to half aureus the mechanism is due to what answer to this is mrsa the mechanism is alteration of the target site that is the penicillin binding protein gets altered to a penicillin binding protein 2a the next question for you is in esbl mediated resistance that is extended spectrum beta lactamase mediated resistance the mechanism is due to what here the answer for you is by enzymatic inactivation esbl is an example of beta lactamase enzyme ESBL stands for extended spectrum uh, beta lactamase enzyme. This enzyme will inactivate the beta lactam ring. As a result, the uh, beta lactam drugs, the organism will become resistant. To summarize, in this session, we have discussed about the various classes of antibiotic. We have also discussed the various uh, mechanism of antimicrobial resistance. So, I hope you have enjoyed the session. Thank you.